Bonjour et bienvenue à votre cœur de français. Hello and welcome to your French class. Je suis ton instructeur. I'm your instructor, Mark J. Viercoli, and today we're going to learn about lesson five, the first lesson in the final term, saying where you live. And in this lesson, we're also going to learn about the numbers from, we're going to pick up from the 20, because last time we learned from numbers 1 to 20. Now we're going to pick up from 21 to 100, and we're going to extend through the big numbers, les grands nombres, from 100 to a billion. So, uh, welcome, and let's continue. So before we proceed, we're going to have some review. Le revion. We're going to learn about, we're going to review about the numbers that we learned in the past from 1 to 20 to refresh your memory. And then from there, we're going to pick up and we're going to begin learning from 21 to, let's do 100 first. And then we're going to extend up to a thousand and a billion. So last time we learned about these numbers. So we begin with zero. Un or une for one, for two that's du, for three that's trois, for four that's quatre, for five that's cinq. Last time we pronounced it as cinq, it's actually cinq, cinq. It's like thank, but instead you say cinq with an s sound instead of a th sound. So if you want to pronounce it correctly. Pronounce the word thank first, as in thank you, and then replace the th sound with the s sound, making it sank. You know, thank you, sank, sank. Okay, to correct because later on we're gonna learn that a hundred is pronounced as song, and we've been pronouncing five as sunk, and it will confuse. So the correct pronunciation of five is sank. C's for six, set for seven, wheat for eight, nuff for nine, nuff, and these for ten. So continuing from zero to ten, we have zero, un, or une, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, set, wheat, nuff, these. That's numbers. 1 to 0 to 10. Now for 11 to 20, that's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, as opposed to C's, C's of 6, so it says of 16, this set, this wheat, this nof, 20. Okay, so if you want to review further, you can go back to our formal lesson there I think there's a recording of a lesson I think it's in a it's on a uh, Facebook page you can find it there if you want to review on the numbers from 1 to 20 one more time I'm gonna read I'm gonna pronounce numbers 1 to uh, uh, 11 to 20 that's owns those 13 14 kings says the set this wheat, this nof, vent. Okay, so let's proceed. If you want to review again, you can go back to our lesson in in numbers up to 20 so that you can refresh your memory on how to pronounce, especially the numbers from 1 to 10 because they are particularly useful because you repeat them. 1 to 9, I'm sorry. You repeat them. After 20, you say 21, 22, 23 up to 29 also 30 you know and you just repeat the number so it's important that you strengthen your pronunciation on numbers 1 to 9 okay extending the numbers okay let's now extend the numbers that we learned from 20 from 20 if you want to say one, let's say 21 or 31 or 41, 101. All you need to do is to add the word e 
which which literally translates to end, and then say one. You say Wang Ti Yang, Wang Ti Yang. So that's twenty one, Wang Ti Yang. So you you can only say end. You are required to say end, or you are mostly most probably you're gonna say end only in the one. Although it's also correct to say Wang Ti Du. Wang ti trois, but it's not necessary, only in, in one. But also, it's correct when you say Wang Tang. Okay, so in this lesson, though, we're gonna put end in one. Literally, 21 in French translates to 20 and one. So, Wang ti ang. Wang ti ang. Wang ti ang. For 22, you say Wang du. Let's just say the number 20 and the number that you want to say. 23, that's 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, uh, uh, 30, I'm sorry, 30 is 30, 30. So similarly, you say 31 by saying 30 young. Trong du, trong trois, trong quatre, trong cinq, trong six, trong sept, trong huit, trong neuf, quarante. That's forty. Thirty is trong, forty is quarante. Quarante. So from 40, you can say Kwa Hong Ti Ang or Kwa Hong Ti Ang, Kwa Hong Du, Kwa Hong Twa, Kwa Hong Kat, Kwa Hong Sank, Kwa Hong Sis, Kwa Hong Set, Kwa Hong Wheat, Kwa Hong Neuf, Sung Quant. So that's 50, Sung Quant. Sung Quant. So 51 is Sung Quant Ti Ang. Or sang kuang tiang, sang kuang du, sang kuang tua, sang kuang kat, sang kuang sang, sang kuang sis, sang kuang set, sang kuang wit, sang kuang neuf, soixante. That's sixty. Soixante. 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 Well, let's, let's remove the z sound in the x. Soixante. Okay. Uh, let's begin from 60. That's 61. Soixante un, soixante deux, soixante trois, soixante quatre, soixante cinq, soixante six, soixante sept, soixante huit, soixante neuf, soixante So that's 70. Soixante dix. 70, uh, their number, the French number ends in 60. So in 70, you say 60, 10, soixante D. How about 71? You say 60, 11. So soixante onze, soixante douze, soixante treize, soixante quatorze, soixante quinze, soixante seize. Soixante dix-sept, soixante dix-huit, soixante dix-neuf, and then next is eighty. And eighty is four twenties. You know, twenties, you're twenty times four. So you say quatre, that's four, vingt, and with an S because it's a plural of twenty. So four twenties. You have four twenties. That's eighty. Quatre vingt. And from there you can begin by uh, saying quatre vingt et un. So that's eight. Uh, that's quatre is four. Four twenties and one. That's eighty one. Quatre vingt deux. Four twenties and two. Quatre vingt trois. Quatre vingt Quatre, quatre vingt cinq, quatre vingt six, quatre vingt sept, quatre vingt huit, 
89, and then the next number is 90, 90. We begin from the 90. 90, that's 90. 91, that's 91. 92, 93, 94, 14, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. 100 is 100. So from 100 you can begin again. 101, 102, I mean 101, 102, 103, 104, 100. You know, until you reach 200, that's 200. 300, that's 300. But the sankt has an S at the end because it's already plural. Similar to English, when you produce a plural noun, you add an S, but you don't pronounce the S. So sankt singular and sankt plural are the same. So until you reach nuf sankt, that's 900. So, for instance, here we have example 100 is sang, 101 is sang tang, or sang tiang, it depends on you. 200 is du sang, 202 is du sang du, 300 is trois sang, 305 is trois sang sang. So, notice the difference now. If we pronounce the five correctly, trois sang sang. The 100 is sunk, the song, I mean without a Q sound, song, and the 5 is sank. So, 300 sank, 300 900 is new song, it's supposed to have an S. I'm sorry, that's a typo. 100, well, I mean 1000 is mil, mil, du mil, trois mil, quatre mil. Sank mil, so you can uh, um, until sank mil, a hundred thousand, du cent mil, two hundred thousand, trois cent mil, three hundred thousand, until neuf cent mil, nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Let's try neuf cent, neuf cent mil, quatre vingt. 19, um, so that's 900,999, I mean 999,999, uh, 999, so that's, that's it. I'm not going to repeat it, it's difficult if you, you can try doing it yourself though. And then after 900,999 comes... One million. Un million. Million. So the N is NG sound. Du million. Trois million. Okay. This is supposed to be a billion, the next one. I'm sorry, that's a typo. There's supposed to be uh, nine zeros in there. And one billion is un milliard. You don't pronounce the D. Un milliard. Okay, so again, that's a billion, that's a typo. Le grand nombre, that's the big numbers. So saying where you live. So let's now proceed to the real, the actual lesson for this video. We just introduced numbers, you know, up to big numbers, up to a billion. So let's proceed to saying where you live. Last time, if you remember, we talked about, we learned about how to tell your name. We learn about how to greet, how to say goodbye, how to tell your name, how to tell your age, how to tell your job or your occupation. Also, we learn about how to ask for the person's name, person's job, the person's um, age. Now, this time, we're going to learn two things. We're going to learn how to ask where a person lives lives and we're gonna uh, we're gonna say where we live okay before we proceed as you know this is just an information an ang fu 
for the lang. That's the information for language. French names of countries and regions have genders. Everything in French have gender. Their, you know, um, even their places, even the, even the name of the places. In this map, which I just got from Reddit, you can find it in Google, and it's in Reddit. If you see something, if you see that the picture has a source from Reddit, that's that's where I got it. For the red countries, they're feminine. The Philippines belongs to it, but you know, um, it's violet there. So, it, the red, the orange, the violet, and the I don't know. I don't know. I'm a bit the red, the peach. I think that's a peach, red, or pink, or pink. The red, the pink, the violet, and the orange. They're feminine. The I don't know the blue, the purple, the these colors below they are masculine. It's up to you. I'm not really good with naming colors. Okay, so the Philippines here, if you notice, what's the gender of the Philippines? Gender of the Philippines is feminine, but it's violet because it's plural. The Red ones, if you're going to name them, you say la. The blue ones, you say lu, because they're masculine. Mostly, the countries in the east are feminine, and the countries in the west are masculine. I don't know. Uh, you cannot ask me why. There is no particular reason for this, and French label things with gender i don't know as well how they do it but the the way for you to master the gender is to use it frequently when you learn a word you should learn the gender of the word as well together with the word in order for you to get the hang of it immediately it becomes your second nature so let's proceed how do you ask where a person lives you say où habitez-vous Où habitez-vous? Où habitez-vous? Where do you live? Or where live you? That's literal translation because où is where, habite is live, vous is you. Où habitez-vous? Again, repeat after me. Répétez après moi. Où, où habitez-vous? Où habitez-vous? Où habitez-vous? You can watch the video that I shared during the um, pre-activity to get a hang of how natives pronounce it. Some some of them pronounce it very fast, just like how how natives of English pronounce it. Whenever you know we listen to them speak English, say "uabetivu," Sometimes they omit some sounds, so you need to listen. But the formal pronunciation of this is "uabetivu," and how do you answer? And when you answer, you're going to use the words here. There are three types of words that you can use depending on the gender of the country that you're speaking about, or you're going to associate yourself with, or you know the country that you're going to mention. So you say, "I live Jabit." J'habite, j'habite, I live, j'habite. So three types of words that you can use, three types of prepositions. First is you say on, I mean on, j'habite on. You say on four countries that are feminine. So France is feminine, Ecos or Scotland is um feminine as well. So you say, j'habite en France, if you live in France. You say, j'habite en, j'habite en Nicos. Okay, so this is what happens whenever you have a, an N sound at the end of, let's say, a preposition en. If there is an N sound and the next letter or the next sound is consonant, like F, j'habite en 
So the N is pronounced with an NG sound in the Philippines, nasal sound. Jabit ong fongs. But if the next sound is vowel, then the N, the N is simply pronounced with an N sound, and then you connect it with the next vowel sound. Jabit onikos. So you, you combine it. Jabit onikos. Jabit onikos. Ikos is Scotland. If you want to know how, how your place is pronounced, uh, particularly your town is pronounced in French, you can open a, a French translator application. Type in your um, the name of your town and the application can pronounce it for you. So you know how it's pronounced in, in France. Well, let's now proceed to countries that are masculine. Again, when you want to ask where a person lives, you say, Où habitez-vous? The answer is, the answer begins with, Jabit. So you say, Okay, so let's now proceed to saying the masculine names. When you want to say where you live, you say Jabit, and you use the preposition O, that's O, if the country is masculine. For instance, Canada, that's how you pronounce Canada in French, Jabit O Canada, or you say Jabit O Pays du Gali, uh, Pays du Gali, Jabit O Pays du Gali. That's, I think that's Wales. Yeah, that's Wales. Wales is a country in Europe. Jabit au pays du Gali. I live in uh, Wales. Now, there are countries that are plural. In here, there's United States and Philippines, and we can understand that because also until, later on, we're going to know what until is. Because these uh, countries are actually group of, you know, for Philippines, it's a group of islands. So for the United States, it's a, it's a group of states. It's a, it's a union of states. And for the Antil, it's a group of islands as well. So when, you, when it's plural, you say O, oh, similar to the O oh of masculine. But, um, yeah, the same sound, but different spelling. We say, Jabit o Eta Suni. Eta Suni. That's United States. Jabit o Eta Suni. Jabit o Eta Suni. Jabit o... Okay, this is... I'm sorry, that's a wrong pronunciation. This is what happens whenever the next sound after the O, the plural O with an X, is, is consonant, you pronounce the X as an S sound and you connect it with a, with a I'm sorry, that's not consonant, a vowel sound. Jabit o zeta suni. Jabit o zeta suni. And next is Jabit o zongtil. Zongtil is, or ongtil is West Indies. It's a group of, I think it's a group of islands. I'm not really good in geography. But it's a physio, they call it physiographic divisions comprising of the greater uh, Antil in English, it's Antilles. It has an island of Cuba, Jam Jamaica, Haiti, and Dominican Republic is also in the West Indies, Antil. So if you live there, if you're from Cuba, you say Jabit Ozontil. Again, notice how the X is pronounced with an S sound if the next sound is a vowel sound, like A E I O U. Jabit o zeta suni, jabit o zontil. Now, included Philippines here, you say jabit o Philippine. You pronounce it as Philippine without an S. So that's basically how you say it. Again, when you want to ask where a person lives, you say, uzabiti, uabitivu. 
Où habitez-vous? And when you want to say where you live, you say, j'habite. And then you say the name of the country where you live in. But using different prepositions every time, depending on either the gender of the country or the, and if the country is plural or not. You say, j'habite en for feminine, j'habite o for masculine, j'habite o for plural, but the X is pronounced. If the next, if the country that you're going to pronounce has a vowel sound in its first sound, in an initial vowel sound, and you combine it with the X sound, you know, you sound it as, a, as if it's an S. Jabit o Zeta Sunni, Jabit o Zantil, Jabit o Philippine. That's how you say it. Now, how about you want to say where you live, but you just want to mention the town. You want to be specific. So instead of saying Ong, O, or O, you can say Ah. That's, uh, if you want to say specific. So you say, Jabit a Marcel or Jabit a Sydney. Sydney is in Australia. Marcel is in France. I live in. Or you can say, I'm from. And you already know what I am is, right? Because when you when we learn how to say how old you are, you say, I am. And that's Oh, that's I have, I'm sorry. So I am is je suis. Je suis. So you say je suis du, if you want to say I'm from. Je suis du La Rochelle. Je suis du Montreal. Or, let's be specific here. J'habite à Mandon. That's how you pronounce Mandon in French. J'habite à Mandon. Or, I change the spelling so that it resembles closely the sound of how you pronounce this, the, the town of Baleno. Jabit a Balinu or Balinu. Or, if you want to say I'm from, you say Je suis du. Aroroi in French is Arroi. Je suis du Arroi. Je suis du Milagro. So you say milagros in French. Again, j'habite à Mandon, j'habite à Balinou, je suis du Arroi, je suis du Milagro. I like to say Arroi, it's beautiful. Je suis du Arroi, je suis du Milagro. If you want to know how, how your town is pronounced, you can open Google and open the translator. You know, translate from from French. It doesn't matter what language you translate it to, but as long as it's from French. So translate from French, type the name of your town, and then let it let the application pronounce it for you. In order for you to hear the pronunciation, you need to click the speaker icon, either in the lower left or lower right. I can't really remember exactly where. So let's proceed now. Now that we've learned how to say where you live, we're going to learn a few countries here, just a few of them, not all. Later on, I'm going to give you a task on you know, learning the pronunciation of a country of your choice. So let's begin here. L'Afrique du Nord. That's North Africa. L'Afrique is Africa. Du Nord, Nord is North, Nord is North, so l'Afrique du Nord, that's Africa in the North, l'Afrique du Nord, Africa of the North, l'Afrique du Nord, l'Allemagne, it's Germany, l'Allemagne, 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 L'Angleterre, that's England, the land of English people. L'Allemagne, Germany. L'Angleterre, that's England. Les Antilles, West Indies. L'Australie, Australia. So these are feminine countries. If you want to say that you live in one of these countries, you say Ang. 
en j'habite en l'Afrique du Nord, j'habite en l'Allemagne, j'habite en l'Angleterre, 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 j'habite en l'Angleterre, j'habite en les Antilles. Oh, this is plural. The le, L-E-S, indicates that it's plural. So you say, j'habite aux Antilles. Okay. L'Australie. That's Australia. J'habite en l'Australie. Next, we have Belgium. It's not indicated here what the gender of um, Belgium is. Belgium is pronounced as la Belgique. La Belgique. Okay. And the gender of Belgium is feminine as well. Because it's la. Based on the um, article that's being used. La Belgique. So it's feminine. You say, J'habite en Belgique. Oh, I'm sorry. Earlier we used the article when you say jabit you don't use the article anymore because it's equivalent to the the so you say i live in the but sometimes it's accurate as well you know, it depends probably in the word jabit en belgique jabit en ecos or unicus scotland unicus jabit un espagne un espagne that's Spain. Jabit o Zetasuni, USA. Les les Zetasuni. La Grande Bretagne is Great Britain. La Grande Bretagne. La Grande Bretagne. <coughs> Jabit en Grande Bretagne. You live in Great Britain. Ireland is l'Irlande. So if you want to say you live in Ireland, you say j'habite en Irlande. Italy is female, feminine. So you say j'habite en Italy. En Italy. Because it begins with an I sound. You need to combine it with an N. J'habite en Italy. Wales is plural, so you say J'habite au pays de Gai. De Gal, Gali, Galu, Gali. J'habite au pays de Gali. J'habite au pays de Gali. United Kingdom is Royaume Uni. Kingdom is Royaume Uni is United, just like in Eta Sunni, Le Royaume. So it's masculine because it's Lu. When you have a masculine country, you say O. Oh, J'habite au Royaume-Uni. Sweden is La Suède. J'habite en Suède. Suède, one of the richest countries. Switzerland is La Suisse. La Suisse. Okay, so we have here new words. We have still, now, and the south of, because we already learned what the north of is. Uh, le nord du. Nord du. Like in the north of Africa or North Africa. I mean the Africa in the north. That's l'Afrique du Nord. In here, south. So, still is toujours. Toujours. Now is maintenant. 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 Now. So, when I say, I am 12 years old now, you say, J'ai deux ans maintenant. Maintenant. 
And the sound of it is lusudu. Lusudu. Again, still is toujours. Now is maintenant. And the sound of this lusudu. So I think that's it. This is the end of our lesson. And after this, uh, I hope you watch this. If, you, if there are things that are not clear to you, you can rewatch the video. Just replay the video and listen to how the words are pronounced. Also practice counting from 1 to you know, 1,000 first. And then you can extend it up to a billion if you have the time. And then learn how the countries are pronounced. So the, uh, as a recap, this in this video, in this lesson, we'll learn two things. How to ask where you live and how to say where you live. Asking where you live is simply saying, Où habitez-vous? And saying where you live is simply saying, J'habite. The next preposition that you're going to use depends on the gender first of the country that you're going to mention. On for feminine, o for masculine. For plural, you say o. And... Uh, for town, you say ah. Okay, that's it. I'm going to live. Uh, for the activity, I'm going to explain the activity. But you can read the instructions as well. I'm going to leave an activity where you're going to select 10 places in the world that you want to visit in the future should you have the time and the resources to do it. And should there be an opportunity for you. So 10 countries that you wish to visit and prepare a Google slide. Prepare a Google slide of these countries. So at least 10 slides, one for each country, where you put either a picture or an information of the country that you're uh, listing down or both, a picture and an information. And then we're going to schedule a session not tomorrow, not on Friday, because there's a scheduled brownout. Um, I just read a not uh, notice from Masalco that there will be a brownout on a Friday from 9 to 5, so that's not an ideal time. But probably within this weekend, we're going to schedule a session where each of you is going to present the country of your choice. Now, apart from uh, listing down the 10 countries, you need to know First, how they're spelled in French. Second, how they're pronounced in French. And third, the gender of the country that you're going to uh, present. So 10 countries that you want to visit in the future should you have the resources and the time. Uh, number one should be your, you know, um, the, the list should be arranged according to your preference, your priority. So one should be your priority and ten should be the least of your priorities. Okay? I hope that's clear. I'm going to prepare a Google class activity for this and I'm going to list down, I'm going to outline the instructions for you to, you know, get it much clearly, more clearly. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.